Uh, here I am in Tamora and talking to Chief Engineer from the Tamora Aviation Museum, Andy Bishop. So Andy, thanks for your time. Give us a little bit of a background on how you got into aviation and what your, what your aviation passions are. Okay, I grew up in an aviation family, um, third generation pilot. Uh, always um, loved engineering and you know, pulling things apart. So. <laughs> Um, instead of going the, the flying route, I went maintaining uh, and then uh, pursued flying on the side. Cool, and I've seen you fly some pretty cool aircraft down there. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky that um, they, um, they let me loose in some of the good stuff. Yeah, some of the good stuff is what, Stearmans and Spitfires? No, no Spitties. No Spitties? <laughs> Just, um, yeah, we're aways and that sort of stuff mainly. Just we're aways? Just we're aways. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Well, look, we're, we're here to talk uh, pretty importantly about documentation because it's part of an area that our um, members, uh, some of them do very well, some of them don't necessarily do well. So the reason we've got Andy here is because he's got a lot of experience in making sure that the uh, log books are filled out appropriately. So I guess let's start off with why is it so important to do research on ADs or SBs or manufacturer requirements for maintenance? Yeah, as a... As a maintainer, um, we have responsibilities to uh, keep uh, manufacturers uh, up to speed with the, the problems we find. And uh, as a result of the problems we find, um, they, they develop service bulletins and ADs and um, information letters. So what they are is actually pointing you to known problem areas or, or deficiencies in, in an aeroplane. So unlike most of your generic annual inspections where it's you know, have a look around, check this hasn't fallen off, that sort of thing, <laughs> where it's all you know, pretty, yep, it's still there, no big deal. Um, Service Bulletin's ADs are, guys, people have had problems with this. This has cracked, this has broken, this has come loose, this has worn look at it, it's important. So um, yeah, I would say uh, over and above anything else, your, your ADs, your service bulletins, information letters, that sort of thing are, are one of the more important things to, to research and to, to look at, um, just so you're looking at the, the critical points. And the easiest way, luckily nowadays, to find that information is on the web. The good old internet, it's brilliant. And especially um, for the, the RAOs aeroplanes, because sort of maintain a lot of different types of aeroplanes, but I, um, I do maintain a few um, RAOs aeroplanes and um, yeah, the accessibility to, to service bulletins, ADs and all the rest for, for these categories of aeroplanes is far better than uh, I think your standard GA uh, type aeroplane. So yeah, it's, it's out there, it's not hard to find, like go to Jabiru, you know, Yep. Go to the windows and just click on it and yep. it all comes down. Go to Technam, they're all the same. Go to you know, Rotax, it's, the information's there, there's great pictures, um, you know, big arrows, look here. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's simple, it's far better than GA. Um, you know, GA is still back in the 50s with line drawings and you know, all this sort of stuff, which yeah. you know, can be hard to interpret. Yep. No, that's cool. Yep. And I love the uh, Rotax site. Put your engine serial number in and it comes up with the relevant SBs and ADs for that engine. So that makes life really How easy. How easy is that? Yeah. yeah. That's modern technology really uh, working for you. Yeah. And the, the effort that these manufacturers go to, to to get this information together, make it clear, concise and distribute it is quite commendable. At the end of the day, I guess it's, it's their product. Hmm. They don't want to have... Um, yeah, a reputational risk of, of things coming undone. So um, they are protecting that, but they've made it just so easy to, to research and to find that you know, yes. it's, it's a huge credit to them. Yep, and you've touched on a really important point too um, in terms of reporting. So it's not just enough to do the maintenance on an aircraft. It's If you have a problem that you discover, if you tell the manufacturer about it, they can actually start developing trend reporting. Yeah, and that's certainly what we do through service difficulty reports through the, the CASA system. I assume RLS has exactly yeah, the same. RLS has got an OMS system, so it's online. OMS. 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 Tech manual. Yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> online occurrence management system. So you just click a button, it'll pre populate with your information, uh, and you can put the information in about your aircraft and what difficulty you had um, with the aircraft then. And, and lo lots of. Um, Serious problems have been uh, identified and trended, um, and uh, I guess um, monitored uh, through that process. Because chances are, if you've had something that's broken, um, 
quite uh, unusually. Um, you probably won't be the only one. Mm. So it, it's it's important we share that information just to look out for your common um, you know, fellow mm -hmm. pilots. Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, you may have been lucky and found it. Yep. Um, next bloke. Might not be. May not be. So, um, so put you on the spot. Can you think of any examples of where you've discovered something that turned into a, an AD or an SB? Um, yeah, tiger moths in, in particular. Um, yep. a, a few um, critical areas on, on tigers where we've had issues. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, that was followed up through the, the CASA system, obviously. Yep. Um, but um, it's, um, it's not just. Um, I guess things that have become um, service bulletins, it's even down to like just information letters, just amending a system of maintenance to mm -hmm. say, well, we've let this go to every, say, 300 hours before we've looked at it, and we found out that when we actually look at it, it's pretty crook. Yep. So um, we're just going to tighten that up. So, you know, we'll bring it back to every, say, 100 hours or something. So it's even like little things that you think, well, you know, it's just worn out, so yeah. what? But yeah. Well, you know, do we need to um, increase the um, uh, level of inspection or, or um, look at it you yep. know, a, a bit more? Yeah, yep. so that's actually the proactive side of maintenance yeah. rather than reactive. Yeah, yeah. but th these are the things that you, you've actually found a problem with, you yep. know, which is what you're doing in the first place. You're not <laughs> doing an annual just to get that you know, stamp in your logbook. And, yep, you know, I'll just do you... the tick and flick. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, We're actually trying to find problems and uh, prevent them from... Yep. Um, now there's, there's an interesting one that you just raised there talking about doing the annual because uh, I know not all of our members necessarily are doing annuals on their aircraft. So you just describe in general terms the difference between a 100 hourly and an annual? Well for us they're, they're all about similar. Mm -hmm. um, what we're trying to, to capture is uh, the condition of the aeroplane and uh, ensure that given the, the, the flying that the aeroplane does in 100 hours time or in 12 calendar months, that aeroplane will still be airworthy. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, I guess, the crux of what we're, we're trying to achieve. Yep. Um, and that's different for, for every aeroplane, um, every operating environment, um, and how often the, the aeroplane gets used. You know, for a lot of stuff I work on every day, I'd be lucky if they did, you know, 10 or 15 hours, flight hours a, a year, so, yep. you know. Um, they, um, they're probably over maintained, mm. um, but you know, you've got aeroplanes that you know, work in little jumpers like this that go out and you know, do 100 hours and then come back into the shop and yeah. you, you need to be very um, proactive with the maintenance on them because you know, 100 hours of, of flight training, you know, doing circuits is pretty hard on an aeroplane. Mm. Um, so uh, you, you need to be really on top of your game there, just looking at all the possible wear points yep. and, uh, and, and problem areas. Whereas, um, you know, most private type aeroplanes would be lucky to do you know, 15, 20 hours a, yeah. a year. Yeah. Um, you, you would be looking at these same areas three or four times um, in, in a hundred hour cycle. So. Yep. Generally, they're, they're over maintained, but um, they're in a good place because of it. Yeah, cool, thank you. Um, so, what's, uh, what's some of the common problems you might see with documents um, if you have a look at a, a logbook from an aircraft? Yeah, there's, there's lots of problems <laughs> there usually. Um, usually, it's just complete lack of information. Yeah. Um, we, um, through the, the, the CASA system, um, have to document a lot of things. Um, it's uh, legislated, so we must do it. And uh, I would hope ROLs, um, and they should be following a similar yep. model. Uh, it's rarely done, um, but it's um, it, it should be done just for peace of mind of the maintainer that it, it's it's documenting what what you've done on the aeroplane. Mm. Like, what have I actually done to this? Did I do tablets? Did I do oil filters? Did I change the oil? Did I do fuel filters? Yep. What one do I use? So next year when you need to get a new oil filter or a new fuel filter or a new whatever, you go, oh yeah, I've got the such and such a type. Yep. Um, and one of the things that people very rarely think about when an they're doing annuals because they just want to go flying at the end yeah. of the day is resale. Um, when 
when it comes time to, to sell an aeroplane and you know they get a, a pre-purchase done, the, the first place that a Lamy um, or a level one, mm -hmm. two, four, whatever, yep. um, we'll, we'll go and look, it is, yep, what's the aeroplane like? It looks pretty good. And then they'll go to the log book. Mm -hmm. Okay, where is everything up to? Mm -hmm. um, has it been maintained? What service buttons have they done? Um, and unless that information's there, you really get an uneasy feeling. Yeah, if you're ever thinking about selling your aeroplane, you need to make sure that the, the log books do accurately reflect the aeroplane. Um, we, um, we regularly see where you know, we go through a log book and for years and years, like, this aeroplane has had nothing, nothing done to it. It's yep. awesome, like, <laughs> never breaks. It's the best uh, aircraft ever. <laughs> ever, yeah, everyone should own one of these. And yep. it's just not the case. Like, mm. you know, aeroplanes take maintenance. Yep. Um, you know, things break, mm. we fix them. Yep. Um, put it in the book. Yep. And then, you know, when someone comes along later looking to buy your aeroplane, they go, well, you know, They've been looking at this. They did this service bulletin. They did this inspection on the Rotax, and they did find this, yep. and they replaced it. Yep. Move on. Yep. You know. Whereas if there's nothing there, you go, well, I can't really tell you much because there's nothing, nothing to go off. Yeah. So it's actually not a negative to necessarily write down no. all the stuff. No, that, that, that shows that you've been actually looking at it yeah. and finding problems. It's nice when we don't have to fix them, but yeah. you know, quite often you do, and yeah, I just. Make sure we document it. Yeah, yep. So I think the message that we're looking for is basically uh, do the action, record the action. So if we've done some sort of maintenance on the aircraft, then let's make sure we record that we've done that maintenance on the aircraft. Yep. Yeah, cool. Um, and so uh, I guess the last question I have for you, and if there's anything else you want to talk about, I'm happy to talk about it too, but um, any hints that you've got from the actual shop floor doing the work? Uh, work environment is is very important. Yep. Um, you know, you look at where we are now, we've got a nice clean hangar. Clean hangar <laughs> facing north, we've got the sun streaming in. Nice. Um, I mean, it all seems, you know, I guess a bit trivial, but things like that aid um, the mm. quality of, of maintenance. Um, you know, if you've got some dark, dingy, half lit hangar um, you know, facing south, all cold and miserable, yep. you're not going to want to spend much time there looking around and and getting involved with the, um, the aeroplane. So things like you know, condition um, of, of the facilities is, is important. Yep. A and also, I guess, your condition as well. Yep. What's your eyesight like these days? <laughs> you know, like, is that a personal question, Andy? Because <laughs> it's not that know, good. <laughs> um, you know, um, people need to you know, think about it. Yeah. Um, some of these um, things that we're looking for, like cracks in exhausts and cylinders, and yep. heads and all that sort of stuff, they're pretty fine things that mm. we're, we're trying to find. Um, you've got to be confident that you know, you're up for that job. And if you're not, yep. get someone else. Yep. You know, it's, it's no big deal to say, listen, you know, I can change the fuel filter and I can you know, yep. change the oil filter and all this, but you know, do you mind just having a good look over my cylinders because yep. you know, my eyes are going. You yeah. know? Yep. Um, or they're not as sharp as they, they used to be. Um, that, those sorts of things are, are important. Um, good torches these days, mm. they're getting a lot cheaper. Yep. Um, LED, yeah. um, pre-LED torches are, are very cheap um, and um, very good. Um, you can find things that, oh wow, yeah. never seen Where'd that, that before. Where'd that come from? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and, and it's purely because you've got a better light source. Yeah. Yep. Um, so all these little things add to the, the safety cool. and are worth considering. Yeah, awesome. Anything else you want to add? Uh, that's You're done? Pretty good for me. Thanks Andy, really no appreciate worries. your time. Thank you.